what is good YouTube it is your main man the source Kasuna here and today I'm finally dropping the build video for my knuckles a lot of people have been asking for this build so I kind of just want to you know come through and bring you guys the details for the build now I'm just letting you guys know that you can pretty much play this build however way that you want to play it um, that completely depends on your style this build functions with pretty much every play style I'd say that you would want to do with knuckles and I'll kind of get into that in a moment. Starting things off with our stats, we are going to be going with agility and strength. Um, prioritizing agility, you know, because that's the main stat for Knuckles. It increases the attack power um, as well as the attack speed. And Knuckles increases um, the critical damage as well as attack speed a little bit. A lot of people opt for dexterity because it increases the attack a little bit. However, you're not going to be reaching the soft cap for critical damage with just agility. Um, in case you didn't know, agility does give a little bit of critical damage, but it is half of the critical damage that strength gives. So you do want to still go with strength for your secondary stat. For food buffs, we are pretty much just using um, whatever your homeland food buff is. You can just use that. Um, attack MP recovery, max MP, critical rate, and DTE. DTE can be changed out for weapon attack or agility. I don't think that it really matters if you need a little bit more attack speed you can go with agility and if you just want a little bit more damage just go with weapon attack with our star gems we are going to be going with mp charge martial mastery throwing knife hidden arm attack up whack and bushido however you can actually change out throwing knife and hitting hidden arm for brave war because something you're going to find in this build later this build doesn't take brave war because it doesn't really need it even if you're playing in like solo you're not really going to need it that much so it's just something to note, you can actually change these two out for Brave Aura, it really depends on your needs. Again, a lot of this build uh, comes down to needs, so you can actually, you have a lot of leniency with what you can change in this build. In our Shot Mastery skills, we're going to be taking the Long Range skill level 10 as well as the Quick Draw level 10. Quick Draw is so that we can get a chance to regenerate 100 MP. This has a chance to proc on every skill use, even the uh, 0 MP skills, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I might be wrong. Um, and long range will increase the damage of your chariot. Um, I don't know if it increases the shadow walk damage because some classes are able to use shadow walk from long range. I don't even know if um, range modifiers affect shadow walk, honestly. but. This will affect your damage in certain skills, so it's good to take it, and it doesn't matter what range you use the skill at, as long as it's able to be used at a long range, then this skill will um, affect it. So, yeah, that's something neat to have in your build. In our magic skills, we're going to be taking Impact and Finale. These will be your combo middle, as well as your combo ender. Um, I'll explain that later when we get to the combos. In our martial skills, um, the main skills you're going to want to take here are Shell Break, Chariot, Abstract Arms, Rush, Ashura Aura, and Flash Blink. Um, martial Discipline you can take as a Star Gem if you don't have the skill points, but just take Martial Discipline. And you at least want level 1 Slide, this will be your combo opener for Rush. So yeah, th this, is, this is what your Martial skills should be looking like. In our guard skills, we will not be taking Mirage Evasion, and the reason behind that actually is because we don't really have any skills that we cast. We don't cast Brave Aura in this build, and we don't have Decoy. And pretty much every other skill that you will want Mirage Evasion for, you can use Abstract Arms with. So, it's a pretty redundant skill to have Mirage Evasion in this build, simply because of Abstract Arms, which is pretty nice actually. Support skills, again, we won't be taking Brave Aura. However, if you do want Brave Aura and you have the spin of the dish out for it, you can actually invest in getting the Star Gem. But Brave Aura will not be a need for this build like it will for most classes because this build isn't particularly an untouched build. You can take some hits with this build and because of that, having Brave Aura is helpful, but not necessary. In our battle skills, we're going to be taking Critical Up 10 and Intimidating Power Up 10. This gives you critical damage as well as a little bit of crit rate and this gives you some more attack. In our Mananofu skills, we're going to be taking Kariki Ranshin as well as Shukuchi. Shukuchi for reasons that I don't really need to explain, it's pretty much a staple of every build at this point, and Kariki Ranshin is just so that you can regen a little bit of MP while you're in Ashura. This will give you access to Burning Spirit, and Burning Spirit will give you access to the ability to regen MP while you are in Ashura, which is something that is very valuable to have because you cannot um, use attack MP recovery in Ashura. So, this is going to be a very, very helpful skill to have. 
and our dual sword skills will be taking Godspeed. This gives you 15 agility as well as, I believe, 10% unsheath attack. The agility is not going to boost your damage that much, so you can actually skip this if you need the skill points. But it will still boost your motion speed and your damage, so I personally recommend taking this before you take certain other skills in this build. But that's just me. That's just how I like to build this uh, character. You can actually take this at your own discretion. This build does not use Godspeed wield, so you should not be touching the halberd skills. I think that goes without saying if you're playing Knuckles. Your goal is to not be using Godspeed wield. Um, in the Assassin skills, we're taking Sicarius level 10. This will give you 25% physical pierce as well as 100 attack. And Shadow Walk will be one of our main DPS skills when we're in a party. When we're not in a party, this skill becomes pretty redundant. But there is a remedy for when you are holding aggro. And you'll see that later in this build. But yeah, this is a skill that you will want in this build. I believe it is a must actually. In our Dark Power skills, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just want Soul Hunter level 10. This will be one of your side DPS skills. And you want Eternal Nightmare so that you can stack Soul Hunter. The purpose of Soul Hunter actually is so that you can have a DPS skill to use while Ashura is off. As you'll see in some of these runs, I primarily use Soul Hunter when I am turning Ashura off. As this skill does regenerate MP based on the stacks that you have. And I feel like it's a really good match to use while you have your Ashura punches going. Because you're racking up damage with the Ashura punches as well as Soul Hunter just having really, really high damage. In our Crusher skills, we'll be taking God Hand. You can actually skip God Hand if you don't want it. But again, this is a skill that I believe is a must if you are holding aggro. This is what I was talking about earlier. This will be our remedy for Shadow Walk. You take this if you are holding aggro and you want divine rigid body so that you can actually god hand fractionals. In case you didn't know, you can't use god hand with fractionals without divine rigid body. Goliath punch will be one of our main DPS skills and annihilator will be giving us, um, I believe 50% weapon attack as well as minus 10% stability. So if you're using DX bomber blockers or salmon jerky knuckles, annihilator won't be a really good match for those weapons. But again, this build is not a DX or Salmon build, so that's something to keep in mind. For our Registrates, we're going to be using Physical Attack Boost, Burning Spirit, Emergency MP Heal, Parsimony, Zero Stance, and Extreme Whack. For our weapon, we are using DTE. However, if you are fighting an enemy that changes elements or they are a neutral enemy, I recommend using Salmon Jerky Knuckles. For the weapon stats, you want them to look something like this. Um, and for the crystals, you want Pommy Chan 2 and Devil Dango. For our dagger, we're using the Frog Warrior Dagger. This gives you short range damage and a little bit of motion speed, which will help you cap, uh, top off on your attack speed. Um, but if you do want to use a shield, you can use the Goldfish Buckler. Um, this gives you 600 attack speed. It drops from Pistius. And you can actually get the Shield Mastery Star Gem and equip that, and that'll give you, I believe, another 400 attack speed. For our armor, we're using DTE armor, but if you are using neutral armor, I will show the stats on screen. But for the armor stats, you want them to look something like this. And for the crystals, you want DX Fighter and Baba Guy. For our additional, we're using the Christmas tree. Um, and the crystals are Evil Lafina and Royal Ox King. And for our ring, we're using the Bear Warrior Obi. This is the best ring in the game for Knuckles, as this gives you short range damage, um, critical rate, and motion speed if you're using Knuckles. And if you're using Two Hand, this gives you critical rate, um, some more critical rate. Um, for our crystals, we're using Gravisap and Sekano Kami. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Sekano Kami is pretty important in this build um, because we're using Burning Spirit. And when your Ashura is on, you do want Burning Spirit so that you can uh, go ahead and have some um, MP regen. For avatars, our goal is to reach at least 20% physical pierce total in our avatars. The other stats don't really matter that much. So uh, again, as long as you reach 20% physical pierce total in your avatars, you're pretty much set for this build. And now we're at what I like to say is my favorite part of the video because we're at the spreadsheets. And when we're at the spreadsheets, I get to go in depth on a lot of things. Um, pretty much with the spreadsheets, you can actually plug in your stats um, of your equipment and your crystals and stuff, and you can actually get your damage. So again, um, I plugged in my stats here and I, have, I also include the pets and the registrets in this area and you get to actually see your damage here. And what this allows you to do, essentially, is see your damage on various bosses. I actually will leave a link to this spreadsheet in the comments um, if you do want to try it. Um, you can select the bosses that you want to calculate your damage at. 
because bosses, um, different bosses have different stats. As you see, Arachnid even has 7% resist and a lot lower defense than Mimugan. Mimugan having the highest defense in the game right now and some pretty beefy um, resistance. Kusto being pretty similar to Arachnid Demon. And then if you um, want to, you know, calculate your damage at Quasar, it's pretty much the same situation with the resist and just a little bit higher defense than Kusto. Um, so again, yeah, you can pretty much calculate your damage in this sheet. And the big thing that this allows me to do is it allows me to compare my damage with um, the other weapons. You actually can see some tabs here and you get to see a little bit of a spoiler of an upcoming build here. Um, you might see it on YouTube, you might not. Um, but the main things you want to look at in this spreadsheet are your damage with um, Rush using Ashura Aura um, and your damage with Chariot using Ashura Aura as well as your damage with Goliath and your Shadow Walk damage which will be right here. Um, or you can just look at your abstract um, Rush damage and your abstract Chariot damage and then your Goliath and that simplifies things a little bit actually. Um, and your Ashura punches matter a little bit but they don't matter nearly as much as the other stuff. And if we compare it to Salmon Jerky here, which this is a pretty generous build. Um, <laughs> uh, if you look at the stats here, this is a pretty generous build because it uses Salmon Jerky, Kitty Tail, Glowing Sea Talisman, and you know, the likes, right? And this is to compensate for the stability and it still doesn't reach as much stability as BTE Knuckles. Um, and the damage is quite a bit lower um, with the Salmon Jerky Knuckles. As you can see, we're not touching um, 7 million with the abstract rush or the abstract chariot and we're barely hitting 7 million with goliath of course it is strong don't get me wrong this is still very very strong as an option if you do want to use this but another thing to pay attention to is your minimum grazes um your minimum graze for goliath here is going to be 2.5 million um while on dte your minimum, your minimum graze goliath is going to be 3.1 million so that's a big big difference and you're going to be noticing um, the difference with these knuckles mainly in your grazes because your grazes are going to be a lot lower on Salmon Jerky. And pretty much the same thing is true for DX Bomber Blockers. Um, stability problems um, and the additional is, again, you're using a Collar Tie and a Glowing Sea Talisman. And, you know, I was very, very generous on the armor and this is a huge gamble um, stat for the armor. And again, it's just not reaching the numbers that the other two reach. Um, again, it's not quite bad, but to even kind of compete with the other two, it just takes a lot of a lot of stuff, you know? And that's just something that you want to avoid with the build. You want to have enough stability where it actually has a return in your grazes and not just your maximum damage. And that's pretty much what matters the most in this build honestly is what you're going to be hitting in your graze because you're not really going to be seeing your maximum damage that much because again when you're grazing you're losing up to 50 percent of your damage so that's just something to keep in mind comparing the grazes of dx and salmon they're actually not too far away but the maximum graze will be pretty different for these two so for these two if you do want to use these two with this build it is an option but DTE will give you the best return overall without, with the least amount of sacrifice. Um, some important things to note again is that the um, budget for these builds matters a lot. Um, this build, the build that I'm using, um, if we total all the weapons, all the armors, the additional and vice versa, it is 662 million spin it. That's something to keep in mind. If you want to use a one slotted version of this build, we're using a one slotted additional. Um, and one slotted weapons, it will still be stronger than the DX and Salmon builds. Um, it'll run you about 117 million. Uh, I have a budget calculation up here in the top if you do want to calculate the budget of the build. And this calculates all six of the weapons as well as all six of the armors. And you can actually change this to um, calculate only one uh, of the weapons and one of the armor depending on how much you're going to invest into this build. Um, a lot of people will only get DTE for the bosses that they fight, um, which can be dark, light, um, fire, earth, you name it, pretty much. So again, that's just something to note. And a huge shout out to Zenesis and Tamyo for helping me create this spreadsheet. Tamyo pretty much did um, a lot of the heavy work with um, fixing the whack because the whack that I had in the old version of this spreadsheet was a little bit inaccurate and we didn't quite like that. And 
Zenesis pretty much made the baseline of the spreadsheet and I just kind of built on top of what he had. Tamiyo also added the bosses here, um, the little menu to click on the bosses. So that's something you should know. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. If you found it helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. If there's anything that you want to know or that I can change, please again let me know in the comments below. Without any further ado, you guys take care.